regiment got attacked and ran, the hospital's going like this. And then you lose all your medical equipment and staff. And the, government, and the enemy would take it over and make it theirs. And then send the, send the doctors back on the other side. That's not a very efficient way to do things. So after First Manassas uh, into 1862, General McClellan decided, let's take all the regimental hospitals and condense them into six regimental groups together as a brigade, we'll call it a brigade hospital. In that way, the enemy can go fight, the brigade sets up a main hospital and sends up doctors to be with the, with the, with the wounded right in the field, and we'll send an ambulance around to pick people up. Except by the time they came to the ambulance corps, McClellan was out, and someone else came in who didn't like ambulances. And then McClellan came back again, and it was such a good idea, and it worked so well the first time, he decided to do it again and take these six, five or six regiments and condense them together with several other brigades, and you have 25 regiments in a core-sized hospital, the Army Corps, and that is a big hospital. That's the way it was in this area in 1863. But most of the corps started moving back and forth to Antietam and Pennsylvania and back down to the Peninsula area. And uh, so they decided, we'll have one corps in this area and we'll garrison the main cities. Each garrison will have its hospital and we'll uh, sort of hire the doctors and clerks and everyone else in the medical department out like a secretarial pool to the individual camps all over the area. So a doctor would spend maybe, or a surgeon would go out with a group of cavalry for about a week and then come back, take a day off, then spend a week in the local camps, take a day off, go into Washington City, take a train in and work at the main hospitals there, and then take a day off and come back out here, and that's our life. So I would be here, or one surgeon would be here every day at 8 o'clock in this particular camp. Sick call would be right here. If the sick people had a prescription from the doctor from before they come and have it filled, right here and dispensed. Pills would be put on the pill counter. That would be six pills that goes into an envelope. That's good for a day. Come back tomorrow. And if they had to be treated or have bandages changed, that would be done over here. And of course, the paperwork is always with us. At the end of the day, the doctor packs up the equipment, goes back to the main headquarters, everything is replenished, and we do it all again the next day. So that's the way it would have been here most of the war. What they put out on that. So, how fast can you cut a leg off? Well, four and a half minutes. Four and a half minutes. If you want a special treatment like anesthesia, that might take longer. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the fastest I've ever done, actually, in real life, uh, is almost a half hour. They were really fast. <laughs> but they did it. They had, uh, had a little burr in the butt to do it because the longer a wound is open, the more the chance of miasma will encounter the wound and cause corruption of the human flesh. And we can't allow gangrene and infection to set in, for heaven's sakes. So we thought the faster we work, the less chance you'll be infected. We didn't realize we were spreading the infection with our fingers. Mm -hmm. That's before penicillin and the mini ball caused more damage than anything else. Oh, I'd, I'd say so. What's penicillin? That's a mold that grows on orange. Orange, isn't it? Yeah. Yes, Every... I, I know. I, I followed this lemon trail from Jackson for some time. Mm -hmm. 100 years later, they figured it out. <laughs> <laughs> oh, but. Uh, but uh, these give you an idea of some of the medications we used during the Civil War time period. These fit right into my saddlebag yeah. so I can carry them okay. at any given time. That was now, these are astringents. They scare away miasmas. Miasmas are what we think cause disease, as I mentioned to this gentleman here. A miasma is a semi sentient ethereal entity that breeds and has its way, its legal way, in and poorly maintained cesspools, outhouses, poorly maintained cemeteries, abattoirs, butchers, uh, any place where there's an accumulation of blood and debris and gore. And what better accumulation of blood, debris, and gore of, of war is there than Northern Virginia? So these uh, miasmas are attracted to bleeding and what better sight. So if you cut yourself, for instance, a miasma will attack you, eat the blood. As it consumes the blood, it, its byproducts corrupt the human flesh and create an infection sign, a line of infection go up the arm, blood poisoning. And this other type of miasma may cause actually swelling and corruption of the flesh. It's very odiferous and smelling causes gas. They call that gangrene. Other miasmas may get into your throat and cause diphtheria or quincy, into your sinuses for sinus infections, and all places that are personal that can give all sorts of manner of itches, scratches, and rashes, and inflammations. So we must be wary of these miasmas. So stay away from these awful places. Or you can buy Dr. John's wonderful medicines here. <laughs> no, I do, I'm teasing. But you can use uh, astringents such as turpentine, tincture of iodine, even formaldehyde and creosote above all will scare away miasmas. 
Why do you think in the hospitals of the Civil War, I mean, I'm sure you've seen images of these, you see bowels of pine all over the place. The smell of the pine scares away miasmas. It's been proven. Just put some uh, turpentine on your wrist to protect yourself. You won't get an infection. That proves the point. It scares away the miasmas. <laughs> you can believe that.